What's up guys? Welcome to the Subscriber Text Game Breakdown. This is the series where Rager and I roast your text game and just basically analyze the interactions you guys send in and give you actionable feedback that you can take to prove your texting success. And I think this one's gonna be a good example because it applies to a lot of guys, you know? You're out and about, you see a cute girl, you chat her up, it goes really well, you get her number, and you, know, you have a good feeling about it, you text her, she texts back, and it's going pretty well, and then you slowly notice her just like investing less and less in the conversation, you know? Her response becomes shorter and shorter until the point where she just completely stops responding. And you're like, what the fuck happened here? Where did I go wrong? So we're gonna take a look at an example just like this, analyze what this guy could have done to possibly have a better outcome. All right, so let's take a look at what happened here. The quick context is that this guy was at a dog park, he saw a cute girl, he got her number, and this is where things kick off. So his opener was, hey, her name, it's his name from earlier, save my number, it was nice meeting you and your puppy, have a good night, smiley face. So right off the bat, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of this opener at all. First of all, it's way too long. You know, he could get the same exact point across with a third of the words. Secondly, it's way too friend to friend. It's like, hey, it was nice meeting you and your puppy, have a good night. It's just a like very friend to friend text. And third is that I don't like the frame that this text assumes because he's saying from earlier, save my number. This may sound like small details, but what it communicates is that I'm not a guy who you would remember. I'm not that high value, so I have to give you reminders of who I am. So what do I do when I meet a girl during the daytime or at a bar, what's my opener? I literally just say, Alex with a winky face. I just sent them my name. And the reason I like this a lot more is because it assumes like, hey, I'm someone important. I'm someone high value enough that you're gonna remember me you know, without me having to give you cues. Oh, we met this bar, we talked about this. Like, I don't need to do that because I already made such a great impression. Uh, so she responds, haha, okay, thanks, you too. So she's probably somewhat interested in the guy. I'm sure she's not sold on him yet. Yeah, she probably still has her doubts. But you know, she, she, she's somewhat interested. She gave him her number and you know, she's messaging back. It wasn't a fake number. She's responding back. She's responding back you know, within half an hour, so pretty good. So he follows it up with, hi, her name, how's your week so far? So this was a mistake for two reasons. First of all, he waited too long. So she texted him half an hour later. It was only 9.45. I would have just you know, waited 20 minutes and texted her back. So I probably would have said something very contextual like you know, if I was with my dog, I would have said, uh, she, when she said thanks you too, I'd been like, cool. Uh, and then my dog's name, Rhaegar, says hi as well. She'd be like, haha, oh yeah, Rhaegar's so cute. Something like that, yeah. I think he has a crush on your dog. Just kind of do that little bit of like, you know, fun and flirty role play a little bit. So I would have just built on that. Uh, some dating coaches advise that you should really play it cool, wait a few days. But honestly, nowadays, that's largely bullshit because, you know, most girls, especially attractive girls, they have 20, 30 guys they're talking to. So you almost want to strike when the iron is hot. You don't want to wait for the conversation to cool off if you don't need to. And this was a situation where he did not need to. So second reason I don't like this text is just because it's kind of boring. Like, hi, how's your week so far? Like, how's your week? Um, nothing, again, nothing wrong with asking girls how their day is going. You know, I do that all the time, but you want to balance it out with something that's more fun, more exciting. So she says, um, it's going pretty good. How's yours? She just doesn't know how to respond. You know, she's like, okay, it's good. How's yours, right? But the fact that she's asking him about his day is generally a good sign because if she was just, if she had this point decided I'm not interested in this guy, she would have just said pretty good or she just not, would have not responded. So the fact that she's asking him about his day, yeah, it could mean that she's being polite, but it's generally a good sign. Like the sound conversation is still salvageable with good text game. Unfortunately, it goes in the opposite direction. So he says, been busy at the lab with all the other smart scientists, working on a cure for corona, you staying occupied or more bored. Okay, this is a bad text for several reasons. First of all, it sounds like he's bragging. Like he's doing a very high value activity, which is, you know, working on a cure for Corona. Right now, you know, what's going on, that's probably the most high value thing you could be doing. Um, so, but the way he presents it is kind of like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just chilling, you know, in the Ferrari, you know, it's so nice to have these very comfortable, luxurious bucket seats. How's your day? It just comes off like very try hard, like, like you're trying to show off which is not good. Also, the reason, the second thing I don't like about it is he says, you staying occupied or more bored. Um, 
he had said something important, there's no need to just like change the topic after you say something that she's likely gonna respond to anyway. You don't always have to be asking girls questions. You can just, if you say something that's engaging, just let it sit and see how she responds to that. It's a more high value frame to have. Uh, so if I was to send this text, if I was in his situation, I would have phrased it like, um, Pretty busy, me and the boys just been casually curing Corona, how about you? So it's like a little tongue in cheek, it's a little sarcastic. She'd be like, wait, what, like, are you serious? And then she'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't even say that, how about you? Uh, it's been pretty busy, me and the boys have been curing Corona, you know, at the lab, something like that. And she'd be like, wait, what, are you serious? And you'd be like, yeah, haha, I'm a scientist, that pop, pop, pop. And then she'd be like, what, that's fucking awesome. And then, you know, you just build up a lot of value. So this is an opportunity to really DHV himself and kind of drop the ball by just being way too braggadocious and just having like the tone being off. So she says, more bored, but school started online. So it's a little better, LOL. Okay, he says, only a little, huh? I have an idea on how we can possibly change that. Uh, it's not a terrible text. Uh, one thing I would have done differently is two things. First of all, I would not have said how we can possibly change that. May sound like a small word, but re sometimes removing or adding one word can largely t change the tone of the, you know, of the message of the sentence. So I would have said, I have an idea on how we can change that. Even better, I would say we should change this. But honestly, at this point, I would not go for the soft close yet. Uh, I just feel like she's not investing enough in the text interaction. So I would have honestly said, um, oh, you didn't tell me you were in high school, LOL, or something like that, probably not even the LOL, oh, you didn't tell me you were in high school. And then she'd be like, well, no, I'm not, I'm in college. So you just kind of like playfully tease her, be like, I know, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then, you know, just kind of build up a little bit more before going for the soft close. So she bites on this bait though, she says, in house that. And he says, let's hang out this weekend, we can go to a park, I'd like to talk to you a little more, this time without your cute little puppy stealing your thunder. So what I don't like about this text, the main thing I don't like about it is that the way it reads is that like, you're here, I'm here, and I'm trying to convince you to go out with me. The frame that I like to have is, I'm here, I don't know where you are, hopefully you're at the same level as me, but if not, maybe I can still hang out with you anyway. And obviously I'm not actually directly saying that to chicks, but it's just kind of like the frame, like, let's hang out this weekend, we can go to a park, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more, you know, without your, it just reads like very like, I'm beneath you and I'm trying to get you to go out with me. Uh, so what I would have said, she said, and how's that, I would have said, by splitting a bottle of wine in my romantic balcony, or just by splitting a bottle of wine. Super simple. Or you can say, do you like wine? She says, yes, good, we can split a bottle. Like super simple, uh, which brings me to the second thing is don't do like park walking days. Uh, yeah, if it's your girlfriend, it's your best friend, it's your mom, sure, that's great. You know, I enjoy going to the park with my dog and I take him there, you know, or when someone, ha you know, one of my family members visit me in town, we'll take my dog, you know, to the park. I won't do that if it's a girl who I'm trying to hook up with. Like, that's like a very friend to friend date. So, um, yeah, so I would have gone with the wine thing right here. Uh, also, you gotta keep in mind that this may sound a little weird, but some girls are gonna find the park creepy. It's just like a little bit unusual in 2020. It's like, this guy wants to go to the park? Like, what if he's a serial killer? I don't know him that well. So, and that's it, really given that, it's like almost safer to invite the girl to your place for wine. Sometimes, depends on the girl a lot. Um, so she says, haha, maybe we'll see how much homework I have to do. So she's like playfully brushing him off, but not completely. He says, I have full faith in your homework completion abilities. It's not a bad text, minus the fact that he spells it wrong. Uh, you always want to be, be uh, very careful with your grammar. Com he spells CPM, but okay, that's a tiny factor, fairly irrelevant. Um, it's not a bad text. I would have said, um, we'll see how much homework I have to do. I've been like, uh, bring, bring, bring the homework with you. Um, you can cheat off my algebra paper. Something like that, again, something contextual, fun and flirty. But this text is actually fine right here. I would have said, okay, cool, we'll probably keep it even more simple. Uh, okay, but anyway, so she doesn't respond to this. Um, okay, so she probably honestly just got busy and then, you know, this, it was time to re-engage. So he did wait a few days, which is good, and he sends her the Ryan Gosling meme. And she doesn't respond to that which makes me think that she must be an alien because every girl responds to the Ryan Gosling meme. But anyway, so she doesn't respond to that and he waits another two days and he messages her again, which is good. So he's being patient, that's good. Uh, he says, still studying your life away coach. It's okay, again, it's a bit boring. Uh, I, yeah, I also would not have said coach in that situation. I probably would have, if I was to say that, I would say studying hard or hardly studying. Just like a more funny way of getting that same exact point across. She says, yep, the grind doesn't stop. He says, lol, it's the cool kid on the block, cute. Uh, hey, come with me to the dog park this Sunday. 
I actually don't really get the first part of uh, first part of that. It doesn't really make that much sense. But really, uh, the main issue with this is that he's trying to go for the close again on a low note. So typically, you know, if you try to make plans with a girl, and for whatever reason it doesn't work out, it could be you got busy, she got busy, whatever, you know, it just doesn't work out. And then a few days go by, kind of go back down here, you know, she kind of forgets about you a little bit. So then you have to build it up a little bit before you go for the close again. You don't want to try closing from down low because that's just going to, you know, significantly reduce the likelihood of it actually going down. So also he's sticking with this dog bark thing again. Like I would have obviously gone for the wine day at my place. Um, so, okay, so she says, um, so when she said, yep, the grind doesn't stop, I would have probably said, yeah, girl, gotta stay in the hustle, or yeah, gonna make those big big bucks for us, something like that, again. Fun and flirty is the theme. She says, Kona actually got hurt last time. So we went, so we're taking it easy for a little bit. So, okay, it's unfortunate. Um, she got hurt. I would have said, um, sorry to hear. Like, and that's, that's one of the situations where you do want to show empathy because dog owners, as I can tell you myself, really fucking love their dogs. So I'm sorry to hear. Um, why don't we just do a human date then? Maybe a bottle of wine, question mark, or something like that? Or do you like wine, question mark? So I would have just segued into a different direction. Um, he says, you and me then, no silly homework excuse this time. Um, this text, all right, so here's the issue. If we take a spectrum, this is, you know, total 100% friend zone, and this is complete, relentless, you know, ruthless fuck boy. So far, he's positioned himself to be like somewhere right here. And then this text is something more of like, a little bit in this direction, something more of like a fuck boy would say. It's not that it's a bad text per se, it's pretty ballsy. Uh, this might be something that I would say, I would probably phrase it better, but that's kind of like the general theme I would have. But I always position myself as the like, you know, more or less fuck boy from the start. So. When, if I was to do it, it would be congruent. When he does it, it's pretty incongruent. Uh, so it's like, whoa, like this guy was so nice, now he's being weird. Uh, in reality, he's just being incongruent. So she says, can't go to a dog park without dogs. She's being a little bit of a smart ass, but it's probably in a flirty way. So here I think this, what he says is kind of what really just seals the fate of this interaction. He says, damn, all that studying really is paying off, huh? Let's do a human park, then smart girl. The reason I don't like this text is because it's condescending. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that was not his intention. I'm sure he was just, you know, being flirty or attempting to be flirty. But I think to a lot of girls, it's going to read as condescending and they're not going to like that. Also, he's still on this whole park thing. Like, can't go to dog park without a dog. I would be like, okay, comma. I've been like, you're right. I have a better idea then. She'd be like, what's your idea? I'd be like, we split a bottle of wine on a romantic balcony. You know, don't need your dog for that. So, Again, I would have used that as a chance to finally, you know, forget about this dog park nonsense and do like, you know, a date at your place. So she says, I have deadlines on Sunday though, going downwards because she's not offering an alternative. She's not saying I have deadlines on Sunday though. Maybe we can do another night. She's saying maybe, let's see if I can finish. She's just like, I have deadlines. Like my deadlines are more important than anything you have to offer right now. So here is the final uh, nail in the coffin. He says, are you nervous? She says, nervous of what? And then he says, of your deadlines. So, okay, so he's using a takeaway here. Uh, the takeaway I always do is, if you're too nervous, I don't understand. But I would not use it in this context. I would use it if, like, for example, I had asked a girl what her schedule is like, and then she just stops responding. Or I say, I do soft close, and she doesn't respond. I have to, like, follow it up. Then I will do the nervous text. But she's just giving him a reason, whether it's valid or not, doesn't matter. I have deadlines on Sunday, though. I would have just said, all right, comma, uh, Monday night it is, winky face, right? At that point, she might be like, wow, you're persistent, okay? Or she may be like, oh, I can't do Monday either. At that point, you have to reevaluate. But again, I would not go with the nervous text here. But if you are gonna go with the nervous text, you can't like tee it up. So this text takes the intensity of the interaction from like zero to maybe 40, 50%. And then when he says of your deadlines, it's just like a toll drop. So if you are gonna go in that direction, you have to actually, you know, when you tee yourself up, you have to actually deliver. So he would say, uh, of going on a romantic walk or of meeting up or of yeah, hanging out, or whatever, anything along the lines of that. But of your deadlines, it's like psh, sets it up and then drops the ball. And at this point, I think what happened was she's like, this guy's kind of weird. Like, I have shit I got to do. I don't have time for this. I'm very likely that's, you know, the way it read. So then he follows up a few days later with, hey, friend, did you bomb your deadlines or test? So this is a really bad re uh, reinitiation text for two reasons. First of all, the obvious, he's saying, hey, friend, uh, you'll never see me, you know, talk to a girl that I'm trying to bang as friend, unless I'm trying to really, really troll her. And then second of all, it's too negative. Did you bomb your deadlines or test? Like when she read that, she probably went like, 
why is he being a dick now? Like, why is he assuming that I bombed my deadline? So, if he's gonna, you know, if he, if he wants to ask that, I've been like, did you get straight A's yet? Like, I would prefer to go in the other direction and over exaggerate it in a positive direction than over exaggerating it in the negative direction. And then she doesn't respond. He waits a week and he says, I had a different feeling about you. I'm, I'm disappointed. But at this point, honestly, it was done. Uh, and so when she read that last text, she probably went like, this guy's weird. Like, I thought he was kind of cool at first, but he's like being weird over text. Like, I'm 99% sure that's the way she kind of viewed the situation in her mind at this point. So what happened? You know, she probably was somewhat into him. She gave him her number and she was responsive. Again, sometimes maybe girls do that to be nice, but generally speaking, if a girl goes through that trouble, you know, she probably has a little bit of interest in you. She's not sold, you know, she hasn't decided 100% that she's gonna go out with you, but she's somewhat interested, she's curious, right? She's going for a test drive. So this is where your text game comes in and you wanna get her from, you know, that maybe territory to a yes. Unfortunately, what often happens and what happened in this situation, she was in the maybe territory and through progressively bad text game, like, you know, friend zoning himself, you know, poor closing, try to invite her to a park, just all the things that I mentioned, he took herself from maybe to a no. All right, hopefully you guys found this breakdown valuable. And if you want me to roast your text game, then just email in your screenshots to the email in the description and PWF Rhaegar and I will roast your text game. Also, if you haven't already, make sure right now you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications, because if you don't, Rhaegar being the savage that he is, will take a massive shit outside your door every single day of your life, and you don't want that. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the description below, and until next time.